Thanks for being here, everyone. Um, really exciting day for us as we welcome Alyssa to Minneapolis. Uh, it was one week ago and in a few hours that Alyssa was hearing her name called uh, by the Minnesota Lynx on national television, and I'll let her talk about uh, that experience. But uh, we're excited to have Alyssa. We're going to learn uh, a lot about her in the, in the coming weeks, but more than anything, what we appreciated about her in the process was uh, we were just talking about this, the, the consistency in, in, her, in her game, um, uh, emotional maturity that she has, never too high, never too low. Um, Skill set wise, we've talked a lot about this. We really wanted to expand upon our three point shooting. That was an add for us as we went into the off season. And uh, to have that in the post position is really, really valuable. Uh, that's not all Alyssa is. Uh, she's really, really um, difficult to match up with in the post. So the ability to do both and what you choose to guard her with, we saw. Uh, the national TV game where if they want to put a 6'8 center on her, she's going to take you to three-point line and drop 37 on you if you go out there and try to guard her. And then if you say, okay, we need a mobile player on her, well, then Alyssa's going to take them into the post and, and use them down there. So really excited about her skill set. Notice I haven't talked about defense yet. Uh, that is a part of her game that we're going to grow um, yeah, uh, exponentially as, as she becomes a, a professional. Um, her college coach told me it wasn't necessarily – uh, Alyssa's fault, you know, that the coach felt like, you know, maybe being on the floor a little longer uh, was a good idea, so not to be in foul trouble. Um, and that was, you know, I mean, that was um, sort of the response, and I said, we'll have to change that very, very quickly, because <coughs> you won't have to worry about, you know, being on the court for 30 minutes in a row, uh, like a lot of times I do with, with college. So, excited to have Alyssa, um, and, and, you know, welcome questions for Alyssa or I. Who would like to start us off? <clears throat> Will in the back. Alyssa, the uh, welcome ceremony earlier today in the Target Center, what did that mean to you? Um, it meant a lot. Uh, like I said in my speech over there, I think just having people around you who really care about um, just what what's important to you and they kind of showed that on display, just wel welcoming me with, you know, things from my background and my culture and then just getting to meet everybody, um, it was a super cool experience. Jana? Uh, Jana Will at the NBC, NBC station here in town, welcome to Minnesota, we're happy to have you. Thank you. What, you're coming off of a basketball season a lot of us uh, dreamed of, worked toward for their whole lives, and you got to be a part of it, and now you're you're in a bar in Minneapolis that didn't exist a year ago, and you're not going to be able to get, well, you're going to be able to get in, but most of us are not ever again because the line goes around the corner. <laughs> to watch people like you play, what does it mean to be a player at this moment in women's basketball? It means a lot, and um, I think especially because when I first came into, when I first started college, um, the game wasn't like this at all. And so to really just see the perspective from that to now is just, it's amazing to see the growth and just, you know, everything that women have been fighting for in our sport, uh, just to finally get the recognition. And, you know, we deserve it. So uh, I'm just happy that that's turned around. Marty? Hi, Marty Rubin with Beyond Women's Sports. What I'm curious about is what, in assessing yourself, what is it about you, not as Alyssa the athlete, but as Alyssa, the person, the human being, that makes you a good teammate? Um, I think I was raised to, um, you know, just be a very genuine and caring person. The people that I was surrounded by, by my whole life um, really just supported me and really lifted me up to, to even be here right now. And um, I think when you're surrounded by people like that, um, you get like your morals and your values are just, um, you know, very in line. And I think that's just what I bring to this team is just being a good person and somebody that's um, somebody that's just dependable and um, works hard and, you know, is very respectful. Yeah, Alyssa, I'm just wondering how, uh, how do you think your game um, developed and improved in the time you spent in Utah? Um, I think that I kind of just, needed to be somewhere that you know I was in the right mind frame and I think that was the biggest part for me um, but something that really was a game changer was just getting in better shape um, and actually being able to 
you know, do what I could do without, um, you know, kind of just being held back from fatigueness. And so, um, yeah, I think that was the biggest thing, but also, you know, I just, I kept working on my post game. Um, I really got my touches around the, around the rim. I think that my finishes were um, something that were very good while I was at Utah, just because, um, you know, like field goal percentage and things like that was pretty high while I was there. Um, and then definitely three point, three point shots. I think I was shooting the best I've ever shot. So, Ken, what do you know about the kind of the history of this program? Did you watch this team when you were younger win titles? Um, to so be, you could be honest. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I don't know much. Um, I didn't really grow up watching any pro sports you know i have a bunch of siblings so i'm always at their games and supporting them and watching them so um yeah to answer your question no <laughs> <laughs> terry hi uh, terry horseman with the next welcome to minnesota i know the last week has probably been a pretty big whirlwind for you but in that time have you had the chance to uh connect with any of your new teammates and just sort of uh foresee how you'll uh, fit into the group that's uh, already here um no I, today was the first time i met them um, and it is a very quick turnaround, so, you know, I'll have some time before training camp to kind of get to know them and work out with them. But um, Ruthie Hebert is somebody that I knew um, previously because we're both from Alaska. And, uh, you know, we were both playing in the state tournament. She was a senior when I was a freshman. And then we also played each other in the Pac-12. So um, she's somebody I'm familiar with, but um, everybody else, I'm just looking forward to um, getting to know them. And you mentioned uh, how your three-point shooting sort of really exploded uh, at Utah. I think it almost doubled in the 40% range. Was that something that just came out with the way uh, Lynn Roberts coaches? Um, sort of coincidental, just, you know, uh, how do you, you know, explain that uh, elevation in your uh, three-point game? Yeah, I think that's a part of it is just the style of play that Utah, the program um, does. You know, everybody's shooters, so, um, you know, you got to be – I mean, you don't have to be, but it's very helpful to be a three-point threat um, on that team. So, um, but also I think it just came from confidence. Um, I, my confidence really grew and that's kind of what, you know, I've always been able to shoot, but, you know, the confidence part was the part that, you know, really kind of elevated my <coughs> shooting. Lucas? Well, this, uh, uh, Lucas C. out there with the next. Um, you had mentioned uh, earlier kind of the importance of your culture. Um, and many people maybe don't necessarily know, but Minnesota is a pretty rich uh, diversity, uh, cultural melting pot uh, with Somali culture and Native American culture and that kind of stuff. Can you um, just basically tell us what your culture means to you? Yeah, um, it means everything to me. And, uh, you know, just because I was, the way I was raised, um, you know, my, I have older relatives who kind of try to keep the like traditions and everything alive and you know a big part of my life was you know doing those traditions and you know it's something that kind of stuck with me and stuff that I love to do and it's just like a time where you know like our family really kind of gets to bond and be with each other and that's a big part of like who I am I'm a big family person and um you know I was just surrounded by it my whole life so um to kind of be at this big stage and represent my people just because, you know, like a lot of people know that it's the representation for, you know, indigenous people and Polynesians win sports, you know, it may be big in football, but, um, you know, women's basketball, it's pretty unheard of. So um, it's just special to me to um, kind of be able to represent my people on this stage. Pat? Yeah, Alyssa, like Pat Worsley with MidPost.com again, just to follow up. Can you give me an example of a one or two of those traditions that your family was, was able to keep alive? Yeah, um, so we have Sunday din or Sunday lunch, I would say, after a uh, church. We would all gather and, um, you know, even like holidays, everybody would just, it's just one, whoever has the biggest house, that's the house we're going to. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just things like that, just getting the family together. Um, you know, I don't, this is not really a traditional one, but we would go camping every Memorial Day weekend. Like that was our first camping trip every weekend and that was really fun. But um, today at the arena, we were, 
I was brought up there to dance, and that's something else that's um, that's a uh, disrepresenting of my culture and a tradition that we do at you know weddings and graduations, things like that. Um, that is a part of my our um, <clears throat> culture traditions. When you have that that big family lunch, what's generally served? Oh, a lot of different things. Um, you know, there's some Samoan like uh, dishes that all of you are probably not familiar with. <laughs> um, I'll say it's a lot of rice, it's a lot of meat, um, and yeah, it's really good food, but there's a big variety. <laughs> Any last question in person? Oh, I was just wondering if uh, your two teammates from Minnesota here giving you a primer at all of what you're walking into here. Um, <laughs> Not, I mean, well, Gianna, my teammate's from Duluth, so she's not from, you know, the city. Um, but they told me it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I come from Alaska and then I went to Utah, so that doesn't bother me. <laughs> Any further questions in person? We can now pivot to the Zoom. We'll start off with you, Megan. Yeah, hey, Alyssa, this is Megan Hall with USA Today. USA Today Sports the Win. Uh, got to see you at the draft, so good to see you again uh, here. So I wanted to ask you, one of the really cool moments from this weekend was seeing you guys interact uh, the draft class. So I wanted to ask, was there anyone that you got to spend time with uh, that you didn't get to before? Um, yeah, I think both of the UConn um, girls, uh, Aaliyah and Nika, I got to, we sat at the same table at dinner and um, it was really fun getting to know them and talk to them a little bit because you know like when i first came and saw all these girls i'm like i've seen all of you on tv but like to see everybody in person in the same room was kind of kind of crazy and it was different so um yeah i would say those two were um two of the players that i uh really kind of was conversating with and got to know better brad Yes, hi, uh, Lisa, it's Bradley from WNBA Swish. Can you speak to what it's going to be like to be mentored by the likes of you know, Lisa and others on the team and what you feel you're going to be able to learn from them? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I'm coming into a team with very talented players and um, something I was most excited about coming to the league was just learning. Uh, because, you know, when you're in college, you know, you know, you're a good player, but um, I think it's a different thing to just come to a different league and just know that, you know, your potential could be so much higher and there's so much more to know and learn about the game. And, you know, I'm very looking forward to just, um, you know, getting to know my teammates and just being mentored by them. And I think that it's going to be a super good experience um, just to you know, be on the floor with other great people. Josh? Hey, Mr. Uh, Josh here for Lakers Daily News. Haven't seen you since the, since the shootout, but um, <laughs> just simply here, congratulations. Um, what was it like sharing that uh, whole, whole pre-draft experience and drafting experience with your family? I know your dad was really emotional. <laughs> yeah, my dad, he, he acts tough, tough, but he's a very emotional guy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, um, I mean, my yeah, my parents were there, most of my siblings, my boyfriend, and it was just so amazing to have, you know, the people who helped you get to that spot be there, and um, that was something that was super important to me, and, you know, like, when I look at my parents after my name was called, I could just see how proud they were in their faces, and, uh, you know, it made me cry, it makes me emotional, because that's really, like, my, my goal in life is just to make them proud, you know, they've given so much up for me. And, um, you know, just where we come from, it's, my parents didn't come from a lot. So um, to kind of just them see their hard work and everything pay off, um, to see their kids make it to the highest level, I think that's, um, that, that's what it means the most to me. Cheryl on the Zoom. Hi, what's your for a coach? Um, you talk about your appreciation for the way Utah plays and Alyssa's style, but what are some of the characteristics of programs and college coaches as a whole that you look for when targeting players, especially in programs 
uh, like Utah that have seen an amazing turnaround in a few years, kind of like what you experienced early on with the Lynx. Yeah, and I watched Utah prior to Alyssa's arrival, and you could see they were an up-and-coming program, probably much like Alyssa saw when, when she considered uh, transferring there. Um, what I saw, I think what stands out often is a style of play that kind of draws you in. Uh, and so I think programs that have an identity, and, and you walk out of the gym and you know what it is that they're about. Uh, and then when you get on the inside and you watch practice and you watch uh, accountability, a level of accountability to what they're doing, um, coaching the details. And when Alyssa goes to set a screen, if she misses the screen, you know, the angle wasn't great. You know, you know that's sort of our love language uh, that when you, you know, that's not gonna be the first time Alyssa hears it when we're talking about the details. And so, um, uh, culture, I think, is huge. Um, I want players that believe in culture, that participate in the culture. I want players that want to be a part of the process and not just experience outcomes. Um, and so, I think, in general, those are those are programs um, that we, you know, we say that players could be more more pro ready, and, and, and specifically Minnesota Lynx ready. Travis. All right, yes, this is one of my questions for Alyssa. Um, I just want to know, um, what part of your game do you think will translate over to the WNBA easy? And what's, up, what's something you really need to work on um, when, you, when you get into training camp and everything so you can be the best version of yourself for the Lynx? Um, well, I know what I'm good at. And, you know, I think even being good at those things will make the transition easy. But um, I think something, the things that I'm good at are, you know, just scoring efficiently, um, my touch around the rim, being physical, um, and just three-point shooting. And then something that I need to do better, um, just improve, is just getting in shape um, and really defense, like Coach said. Um, so I think that once I do those two things and then, you know, keep, obviously keep working on um, shooting and like sharpening up what I'm good at still. Um, I think that that's that's what it will take to make me the best overall player. Thank you. Ryan? Well, let's say you talk about, you know, maybe not watching the Lynx growing up or professional sports, but coming to a story franchise with championship pedigree like the Lynx, uh, what does it mean to you to be able to join a you know, organization like that? Um, it means a lot, I think, um, you know, somewhere that has a rich basketball history is honestly just an honor to be a part of and to kind of carry that um, forward. And so, yeah, I'm just excited to, to kind of help to add to that um, just winning culture. And then a follow-up to that, you know, is there a player that you kind of wanted to model your game after growing up in college? Um, no, like I, I didn't really watch pros growing up. So, you know, what I did was I just was in our little cul-de-sac on our street playing basketball with my dad and my brothers. Um, we went to this gym in Alaska called the Alaska Club and we would go there and just run pickup. And so that's really how I, that's really how I just picked up my skills and, and everything that I do on the court, um, being physical and things like that. So, and then once I started taking basketball more seriously, I kind of started to, you know, work on different things and different skills, not only um, just things I was doing in street ball. So, um, yeah, I think I didn't really watch anybody or try to mold my game. I think that just the way I play is very unique and, um, it's very, I feel like, straightforward. So, um, yeah. And any final uh, questions? For Coach, if I could, uh, Coach, just, did Alyssa kind of remind you of any player that you coached or seen in the past when you took her? Yeah, I would say that um, a lot of times we do comps for, for players. And um, there was a player a few years back, Daniel Adams, that played at Texas A&M, that had the three-point shooting, undersized post player that, you know, um, Alyssa's listed as 6'2", but Fee is not even 6'1", and she's taller than, than Alyssa. So, you know, we can keep calling her 6'2", that's great, right? <laughs> she doesn't like it, so she's 5'11", right? Uh, but 
but undersized and and so a unique um and, and danielle adams is such a great comp because danielle if you switch that's what your instinct is to do when you're playing a shooter a, a shooting big is your instinct is to switch and when you switch and now Alyssa can go into the post well danielle adams danielle adams was exceptional at that um and that's you know that's probably you know a starting point in terms of skill set and i think that you know, some of the things that Alyssa mentioned, I think the exciting thing for a young player like Alyssa that has so much ahead of her in the way of basketball <coughs> that I think yeah, tasting, tasting success, experiencing success. I told her she's coming to our franchise at a good time in that, you know, five years ago, we weren't playing rookies very much at all. And it, you weren't, you didn't want to be drafted by the Lynx because you weren't going to play because we had legends in front of you. Uh, this is a really good time to be a young player because when our, our phase of winning while developing and, and having a sustainable success, a path for players that will be with us for a long time. So she's gonna get a chance to, to be on the court and taste success and have those moments where it's a little bit like golf when you hit a good shot, it keeps bringing you back. Well, it's the same concept. You know, Each day, Alyssa's gonna have these, these successes that she's gonna have a thirst for wanting more and continuing to grow. The resources in our league are at an all time high for players in that her support goes well beyond just getting to the gym shooting. You know, it, it's a, it's a, you know, we have capital investments in our shooting aid uh, that's all throughout the gym. First of all, our facility is, is second to none. And, and so just having things at her fingertips, um, our sports performance coach that Alyssa will spend time with and she'll be strength training and conditioning as she mentioned, player development coach. So there's so much at a, at a young player's disposal that it's a really exciting time, and, and uh, you know, I think Alyssa's game, you know, will as a starting point. We always talk about a floor. I want a player whose floor, uh, that every day she comes in, uh, is going to be able to exist in our league with shooting and finishing at the rim, uh, rebounding, that sort of thing. If she comes in every day and does those things, she can find success and, and will help our team, and then grow from there and head towards uh, what her ceiling may be. And then we'll wrap with one final question from Brad. Yes. Hi, Coach. Um, can you speak to how players like uh, Edsa and other rookies are going to help you build a foundation for the future and to meet your organization goals? Yeah, and we're excited about that, as I just alluded to, that uh, last season, I think that was one of the – uh, the more exciting uh, narratives that come from this season is we were very committed to playing Diamond Miller, our number two pick. Uh, but then even further than that, we were really excited about how the draft turned out for us. And we got uh, a, a French player that we'll be seeing at a later time. But Dorka Juhas, who was the 16th pick, uh, we ended up starting two rookies and, and had some success in, in doing that. So they're going to continue to grow. And then you add you know, someone like Alyssa to the group and, and you just kind of go, again, you can train on the job, so to speak, and, and build towards uh, a sustainable uh, future of success. And, you know, I think the one thing that will be obvious to Alyssa when she, when she comes into our practices is that uh, the expectations are very high. And if you hang around Minneapolis for a little while and you meet all the great Lynx fans, you'll understand uh, they like championships. They like those banners that hang in Target Center. And, you know, we're on a mission to, you know, put ourselves in that space where we're competing for championships. And, um, and so that's what I see for this team when you have a chance to um, have young talent. Uh, we've really turned our attention towards the draft rather than away from the draft, which we did uh, at one time. We were all about veterans. And so I just think this is an exciting time and a sustainable, successful future is what we want Alyssa to be a part of. Josh, do you have one question? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, just uh, you mentioned that you were looking for against each other, you know, at the, at the high school level, and then at the college level. What's it going kind to of be like? It's only been six Alaskans that have uh, never played about the NBA. But what's it like for you guys to represent, you know, your home state on this stage? How do you feel to get to play with her? Yeah, it would be super cool. I think uh, you know the only two Alaskans in the league we were talking about earlier. Um, we have them all. Yeah, <laughs> the Lynx got them all. <laughs> so it's just really cool, um, you know, especially just, you know, we played for the same AAU team. Um, she was on the older team, but just coming from the same place, like, I feel like we know how hard it is to kind of 
you know, make a way for yourself out of there. And, um, you know, just to be that, I don't know, pave, pave the way for the rest of the, you know, young female basketball players over there. Um, it's going to be super cool. And for them to see us playing on the same team, that would be a really cool thing.